Hello and welcome back to another installment to Pokefodder where I discuss AR and geolocation mobile games. In today's video, we have a surprise release of a new creature for 2.7 that we're going to talk about, as well as how you can find all the new creatures. Well, this is not a new creature. This is actually a Kula, has been around for quite some time. But as I'm recording this video, I am running a Gigascent. I am in a local one, and that's going to be important because when we discuss today's video about where to find all of the creatures in version 2.7, local one is going to play a significant role in that. But reason why Kula is spawning now. It's typically a night spawn, I believe. It's because it is part of the Skuna Saurus uh, hybrid pursuit. So there you go. Not bad darting. Uh, 226, as you can see, I'm at visual cap, so I have no idea how much of that DNA that I have. But that is enough about the old creatures. Let's talk about the new ones. And somewhat of a surprise, today's Alive Strike Tower, the epic that is released on Tuesday, it is the three-step epic strike tower, in case you are wondering. Bumpy is available. And Bumpy was one of the two remaining creatures that we had not seen since the release of 2.7. So you do have a very small outside chance of, once you defeat this tower, picking up maybe a few hundred, maybe less than 150 DNA for this creature. You will need 150 DNA to unlock it. So if you get under that, uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, you'll have another opportunity that I will go into in just a minute. Or if you are part of an alliance or an alliance co-op, maybe one of your teammates or one of the co-op members has already put it in a sanctuary. Luckily for me, I am part of a sanctuary co-op and a bumpy has already found its way in. Look at this little green fighting machine here. So this is the adult bumpy from the Netflix show and not, not the baby bumpy. I think most people wanted to see the baby bumpy, but you get the adult version. I don't know that a baby bumpy would have even last in any kind of battle format. It would have been a common for sure. But there you go. Your first look at the new bumpy creature. In case you are wondering, I'm going to use the JWA field guide for the stats on this. If you want to download it, I highly recommend it. You can find it in either the Google Play Store or the App Store. Obviously, this is an epic resilient creature with a health base stat of 4200 what i mean by base stat is level 26 no boosts added it has a damage of 1050 a speed of 113 25 percent armor and a 10 percent chance of landing a crit you won't be able to find this creature in the wild because it is an event exclusive so any dna that you get this week you will just kind of have to wait until the next event in order to get more of it if we look at the moves, it has superior vulnerability, which is going to decrease your opponent's speed by 50% for one turn. The target is vulnerable for one attack, lasting two turns, and this is a precise attack that does one times damage. To go along with all of its armor, it has an instant invincibility taunt, which is going to be a priority move. The move is going to shield you 100% for two attacks, lasting this turn, and in a raid situation, it will be a taunt, which is going to attract your opponent's attacks. It's got a cooldown of two and a delay of one. Continuing on, we have group taunting shields impact, which is going to be another taunting move. It is also going to provide 50% shields for two attacks, lasting two turns for your team. And it's going to target the highest damage opponent with a one and a half times attack and a cooldown of two. And Bumpy has the swap in move of Stunning Alert. This is a new move and it utilizes the alert ability. And if you don't remember, an alert ability determines whether you are secure or threatened based on your HP as to what move is going to be active. So in a secure state, which means that Bumpy has an HP over 2100, you're going to target the opponent with the highest damage and you're going to have a 100% chance to stun. In a threatened state, which means that your HP is 2100 or less, you are also going to be unable to swap for the lasting two turns. You're going to target your highest damage opponent, but you're only going to have a 33.4% chance to stun. And of note here, I think it is very interesting and maybe a little bit of foreshadowing the way that this is worded. And what I mean by this is in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can only target one creature. 
The only time you would target a creature with the highest damage is in a raid situation. But in raids, as of right now, you do not have the ability to swap in. So how would you have a swap in attack that targeted a highest damage opponent. Now, I don't know anything that you guys don't know. I'm just kind of speculating because I find it very peculiar how this is worded. And maybe it is foreshadowing about something to come in the future about raids. Bumpy is going to be 50% resistant to speed decreases and 100% resistant to being vulnerable. Now that Bumpy is in the game and we know it is an event exclusive, the only way you're going to be able to find this is on Friday, there's going to be an epic strike tower that is Bumpy themed. So you're going to be able to get guaranteed DNA from that as long as you take out the tower. Additionally, it looks like there's going to be a slight chance of receiving Bumpy DNA out of any of the strike towers for the rest of this week. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bumpy is able to spawn off of the anniversary scent that will be released later this week. As far as the other creatures for 2.7, well, as you can see here, based on the field guide, Comp Sognathius is going to be able to be found in Local 1. But you guys probably already knew that because I live in Local 1 and I'm desperately seeking Compy. If you don't live in a local one and you're like, well, how do I know if I'm in a local one or not? Your best bet is going to be anywhere that you find Gallimimus, Glycton, or if you are hunting during the day, dawn, or dusk part of the day, you want to look for Innostrancevia or Miragaya. As long as you see any combination of those four creatures, you can be safe in knowing that you're in the right spot. As far as Compsognathius Gen 2, well, this is going to be an area for anytime spawn. What you wanna be looking for to know if you're in the right area here is Bonalophosaurus, Parasauralophus, or Scolosaurus. And the reason why I say that is because those are the commons that are going to spawn most frequently in this area. And since Compi Gen 2 is just a rare class creature, you should be able to find plenty of DNA just by being in the area for any length of time. But if you aren't able to get out to a local four, fear not, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you will have the opportunity to dart Compi Gen 2 at special event supply drops. That leads us into the Dodo, which is a park spawn. Now, just like Bumpy, this is also going to be a creature that you can get out of incubators for the rest of the week. And this weekend, you're going to have 12 attempts at special event supply drops to dart this trio bird. And Dodo does make up a hybrid. Combined with Innostrancevia, gives you Dodo Sevia, the legendary hybrid. And speaking of hybrids, the Compi from Local 1 combines with Diplocalus Gen 2 to give you Compsocalus, which is the first unique creature in Jurassic World Alive that is not a super hybrid. And all of this leads up to the final new creature of Jurassic World Alive version 2.7, the new Apex Refernatum. Because it is an Apex creature, it is only going to be available via raids. And lucky for you, you will not have to wait very long because our first Friday raid ever is going to be Refernatum on May 28th. My guess is you're going to average about 20 DNA per successful completion of the Refernatum raid, which means you're looking at about 15 weeks until actually unblocking this new amazing looking apex creature. So there you have it. A look at all the new creatures in Jurassic World Live version 2.7 and where you can find them in order to create them. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like button. While you're there, go ahead and subscribe so you'll be in the know for all the latest new information regarding Jurassic World Alive. That's all I've got for this one. So until next time.